Hey y'all and welcome back to another video by Umbra's Darkness. In today's video, you guys, we're going to be going over how I would build a farm account. This uh, suggestion actually came in from a viewer on how their server builds farm accounts. And after reading it, I think it's the best way to build farm accounts. The reason that I believe this is that when asking about a farm account, it's a farm account. It's supposed to be a non-emotionally attached account that you use to hit resources for that is not supposed to be an alt account an alt account is an account that you play just like your main typically free to play if you're a pay to win player on your main most players would pay play fee to play and then that that would be an alt account as a farm account it should be something that produces resources you have zero or next to zero investment into and you move on uh, that in mind, this is how I'd build a farm account. Uh, there are two thoughts of farm accounts. There's quantity versus quality. Um, I'm a fan of the quantity based off of how much time it takes. Um, I'm not a fan of the quantity method uh, just because of how much time it does take. Uh, but if you're a quantity person, you can do that. And I will be talking about the quality methods uh, in this video as well. Again, I will only be covering farms, not alt accounts. All right, you guys. So again, this is a submission from Dark Hickus, uh, a member of my Discord community. Uh, they call it the unsupervised farm fleet guide, also known as a pump and dump. <laughs> don't at me about the name. I like it, but don't come after me. Um, the goal for them is 100 to 300 level 13 farms per alliance, meaning 100 to 300 farms per 80 players, right? So for you, it could be three farms, four farms, one farm, right? You can make a farm a weekend for four weekends. Uh, level 13 farms. A level 13 takes four hours, five hours to make. Uh, I'd ha be happy to do a video of me literally doing this guide if that's something you guys would be interested in. Uh, you know, let let me know in the description below if that's something you'd want me to do is a like fast forwarded version of me doing this. Um, but each one gives about three mil per day, totaling in 300 mil to one billion of each resource per day. Insane values, you guys. Um, Ignore the note if you're building this for yourself. Obviously, you would own the farms. What to do? Create the farm. Sweet. Open a new version of the game. Get to a level you can move to whatever server you're into. They're from 260. But get to a level where you can move to the server you're in. Uh, I think that's like level 3 all the way up to, if I'm not mistaken, level 13. But I would move sooner rather than later. Because you would want to join the main alliance... Uh, for one day or active farm alliance, whatever you want to do for a couple of days uh, That'll give them enough freebies meaning like those resource values the uh, Lizards that they're gonna do the force of event uh, Items that they're gonna do that'll give them more resources to try and boost them up uh, Get to level 13 and unlock all the needed buildings specified below move the, uh, to community farm to the server uh, oh, and then immediately after you attack the new farm, you want to attack the new farm immediately for the survivor reward when once it moves to the new server. The reason that you want to do that is if you don't want to keep it around your hive. Otherwise, you can just use the alliance teleport hive. Um, otherwise, if you do the survivor reward on day two, you would be able to use an advanced teleport to move it to specifically where you want. Uh, and to get around the newbie shield, you just scout another hill or something that you're nearby. All right. So level 13 unsupervised farm stats to hit. This is very important that you follow this to a T. You don't want to level up more buildings. You don't want to do unnecessary things. You don't want to max out certain buildings just to say you did it. You want to follow this because you don't want to increase your fungus consumption uh, too high because your resource buildings depend on maximum fungus uh, 
Population doesn't play into anything other than honeydew production. So it doesn't matter that you're not going to refill your watering pool or whatever that thing's called. It only matters that your fungus production is net positive, not net negative. Uh, so queen level 13 herder class. I'm going to show you a battle report from anti queen 25 raider hitting a queen 13 herder class. And you'll understand one why it's herder class and two why I think that this queen 13 method is so important. Level 13 nati native fungus. Again, you want to break even or be positive in the fungus production so that way your, your resources produce max output. Sand, soil, plant resource buildings, all the 13. This depends on your needs. Personally, I have 1.2, 1.3G uh, plants. So if I were making these for myself, I would not be doing plants. But if you're an earlier player, like you're trying to get to Queen 23, um, you're obviously going to need a lot of leaves because you have to get your barracks to queen 23 in order to get to queen 24. Your alliance center to level 6 as soon as possible for helps at start. This just saves you diamond speed ups in order to get you where you need to go. And then tier 2 depots, sand, soil, plant to level 5 or 6, 10 mil plus depot uh, deposits. This is so that if you don't hit the farms every single day and you leave like a day or two days in between, you're still net positive or you're still producing more and more resources for them to hit because the more resources that are there, the better. On that note, you could lock off your meat depot so that way when you hit, you're not getting meat. Or if you don't need plants, you you not lock off your meat and leaf depot so that way you're not getting meat or leaf, allowing a single hit to be more potent of the sand and soil that you need. The only evolution that you care about is hill development. Max out the first six times. Ignore or first six items. Ignore everything else. Uh, personally, I could see either the first six items or seven, and I'll show you why. All right. So first, real quick, uh, we're gonna talk about the native fungus. Then we're gonna talk about why herder class. I'll show you guys that battle report, and then we're going to talk about hill development and everything else. Again, you guys, this is from Anti, level 25, part of the Nerd Herd. Uh, queen 13 farm that they're hitting, Anti's Raider. Queen 13 farm is a herder. 1 mil sand, 1.6 mil wet soil, 401k honeydew. Those are the highlights of the resources that I care about. You could lock off the meat. It wouldn't take up that. It'd increase the other values. You could lock off the leaf. It, would, it wouldn't take off. It wouldn't add. It wouldn't add to the amount of resources you're taking. And you could take more lit wet soil and sand so again it depends on what farms you need them for obviously you'll never need meat until they fix the bug of pop the population buildings uh, and even then you may not and then leaves uh, as you if you're in a high spending alliance you won't need leaves um and then wet soil and sand uh so that that shows why you want them to be herder and why raiders uh better uh, I'll show you that again in a different way. So if I look at the classes and I look at herder, resources rated plus 100% when being attacked. So obviously you're giving more resources away. And then raider, troop load plus 150% when invading. This is super important, you guys, because every, like, I think it's three levels below <laughs> your queen level that you are, you get a percent less of resources plundered right so you're getting four for whatever that percentage integer is i don't remember i don't recall um less and then sand and wet soil the things you need are weighted at 2.8 and 2.3 so they it, it takes more space to hold them anyways so all those add up to you wanting to be able to plunder as much as possible but even still them producing three mil sand and three mil wet soil and being able to get that as you saw in three hits means that you you're you wasting 15 stamina to get three mil sand and three mil wet soil uh which is the equivalent of 40 bugs right because 10 bugs gives about 1.5 mil of that resource uh, because each one with all of the boosts and everything unlocked gives in between 110 to 150k of each resource. Uh, so that that being said, that's why you do it. 
Uh, and then for the fungus, why fungus matters and population doesn't, and why you can never you never need to attach this again. If we look at aphids, um, aphids require population, but if we go to sand and we click on efficiency, only fungus. If you go to wet soil, click on efficiency, only fungus. If you go to leaves and click on efficiency, only fungus. If you go to meat, click on efficiency, only fungus. So that's why, again, you want your fungus production to be positive and your population doesn't necessarily matter so you don't have to worry about refilling the feeding grounds every time. So how to max your fungus output, you might ask. Glad you asked. Again, Anti has got us covered. Again, if you need a written version of all this, it's in the useful data sheets. All right, so this is how to optimize fungus in uh, fungus output in a, like a Queen 25 main account. But you can follow the same principles for Queen 13. All healing pools except one. Okay, if you're doing a farm account that you're never going to touch again, all healing pools. All builder habitats, all worker nests, all rally centers, special nests, special ant habitats, troop tunnels, toxic fungi, sentinel tree, alliance center, construction center. Optional, all woodhouse colonies. No one should need a farm for meat. If you do at the current stage of this recording, right, contact me, you, you're playing the game wrong. If they fix the bug, then sure, you might need meat. Temporary disconnect, need access to some functions. This is, again, so I'm probably going to mark this chapter as how to save fungus production. But uh, if you're building a farm account that you're going to drop and never use again, this would just be how to save it, period. Or what I would lock off, period. All barracks, troop camp, class buildings, mutation pool, ladybug, evolution fungi, Feeding ground, entrance. This is not native fungus. This is evolution fungi. You need the native fungus. Optional, depot level 3s. You're not going to have depot 3s at level 13 anyways. But at queen 25, if you don't need the resource things, like, I don't know, you're running out of buildings and you need to maximize uh, depot 3s, like your water storage, you could lock that off because no one needs that much water. So... Uh, that's how to optimize fungus in general and what you can apply to your account in order to ensure it's positive. Proof is in the pudding though. I'm a big fan of that. So, uh, I don't have a level 13 queen to show you, but, um, going from, so that's the quantity portion going to the quality portion. Here's a couple of screenshots from Auntie's queen 20 farm. So it's the same philosophy, you guys, uh, no fungus here, right? You're not using the leaf cutters. Positive fungus pr production, even a little bit, doesn't matter. You're still having positive fungus production. And then low level aphids because A, your population's gonna drain out and B, the amount of honeydew that you have here, you're never gonna fully be able to get out, out of herder or out of raider protein because it just, you're, it's weighted so heavily, it's like 4.3, I think, or 4.4, that you'll never be able to take enough of it. Um, so it, you'll be fine if it's just low-level herders, and that's why it wasn't on the list of things to bring to level 13. Um, now, to talk about quantity versus quality, so quantity, level 13, takes four or five hours to make. Uh, then you never touch it again. You disconnect it. You don't attach it to a Google, whatever, Google account or whatever. At Queen 20, I'd probably make a Gmail. You'd probably be making less. But it also takes a significant amount more time. The reason that that is, is it's exponential how much time it is to level up the Queen. It's exponential how much time it is to... Um, max out certain things it's exponential how much resources it's required you're not getting that much more but if you want to do it these are the things that i personally would recommend so if i'm doing a queen 20 farm uh, i'm probably playing it every day not to actually play it but to like send out to hunt insects uh, for additional sand or whatever and to send out to gather, right? Maybe once a day or twice a day as a farm account. An alt account is something different. Uh, in that regard, I would probably max 
best rest. I wouldn't go farther. It's not worth the resource investment. At least gathering and transporter on all of the march units. And I would go to carrier and I would level up belly storage and pack light so they move real fast. And I'd main T2, you know, carriers for gathering. And I'd main T, I'd bring it up to what, T7 carriers because your barracks have to be level 19 to go to queen 20 anyways or something like that. Um, carriers. I wouldn't touch anything else. I'd just do carriers. Um, and I would level this, I would level up these two evolutions to max. Um, and hill development, I would max out these six and this one just like uh, you should with the uh, queen 13. I wouldn't touch anything else. This is a farm account, not an alt account. If you really wanted to, on a farm account, maybe passively maxing out soldier healing and doing zo zone development on the theory that like, server versus server if you inadvertently get like six shell or what third shell or second shell you're getting slightly more resources slightly more creature remains and you're helping out the server server score sure but if you're like hard diving in to get zone development and you're hard diving in to like max out these things and you're hard no stop you know maxing out basic combat so that way you can hit level 15 insects makes sense um but if you're trying to like come at me and be like well you know you should do this and this and this because it's more helpful to your server you're not talking about if you're worried about server versus server contributions from the farm account it's no longer a farm account it's an alt account a farm account is there to provide resources to your main account it is not there to provide server server scores it is not there to do pvp on its own it is not there to do groundhog. It is not there to care about insect levels. It is not there to do X, Y, or Z. If you are interested in a slower progressing far, uh, alt account to redo whatever you did wrong on your main or to re-experience the game, I have videos for that. I can revisit those videos if you would like me to retouch those videos, but that's not the purpose of this video. A farm account should be there to produce resources. The highest that I would ever bring a farm account is queen 20. Now, when they come out with queen 30, I'm sure that I will change my mind and queen whatever will be higher or more optimal. But at queen 25, you're producing enough resources. It's enough investment. You can, if you want to, unlock zone development. Um, and as we saw with Auntie's photos, at queen 20, you can still lock out enough buildings in order to have positive fungus production. Uh, Anti says that even at Queen 25, if you lock out enough buildings, you can have positive fungus production. But how many more you want to lock out uh, it gets pretty tricky. So that's quantity versus quality. If you only want to produce like one farm account, sure, maybe do quality. It's going to take, you know, a month to get to Queen 20, maybe a month and a half. Um, if you want to do quantity, it's going to take you four or five hours to get to queen 13. If you use blue stacks like I do, you can have six different instances open and do do one version and then do another one over here and another one over here. Uh, as a member of my Discord did point out, you cannot use blue stacks to mirror images and then set up an AI to do it all for you. You can, however, have multiple instances open in order to do one, then do the next, then do the next, then do the next. So in, you know, four or five hours, especially if planned out over reset, you could do the survivor rewards. You could have all, all these farms at level 13 and then log them off blue stacks and never touch them again. That's my personal opinion. That's where I'd go. On that note, you guys, we reached 3,100 subscribers. The code word is going to be Reddit. Um, the reason I want it to be Reddit is because I made my first Reddit post today. I found out that uh, the fourth greatest way that I get mess or that I get people to come visit my YouTube is Reddit. So credit where credit is due. Um, please, you guys, if Reddit is your thing uh, and you want to support my page a little bit more, please go upvote that post. That post is going to be linked in the description below. I appreciate it so much. Without any farther ado, we're going to be drawing the 3,000 subscriber giveaway with making a farm all right you guys you know how we do it when we do it over here 
for random pickers, we, get, we try to be as transparent as pop possible. Uh, we're going to right-click copy on the URL. We're going to go over to the random comment picker. We're going to right-click. We're going to paste. That way you guys can see that I clearly put in that one right there. Uh, then we're going to filter duplicate users. We're going to include required comments. Don't care where you put in the code word. And then we're going to do the... Uh, specific code word we're gonna go to show more we're gonna go to the keyword down below we're gonna right click Oop. we're gonna right click and we're going to copy the code word and we're going to right click paste right here get YouTube comments 79 unique comments thank you guys so much for the love and support uh, it's insane you guys I love it I am very much appreciative of it um, Go ahead and start. Oh man. Uh Sid Hant Pryadarshi. Oh man. I Yep. Word. Yep. I did words. Uh I am so sorry. I do not mean to be disrespectful. Sid Hant Pryadarshi. Tier list. Nice, simple, convenient. Um congrats you guys. And uh, good luck uh, on the next poll. Again, that code word's going to be Reddit. Description down below. Please upvote my post. Um, real quick, you guys, I'd like to thank my Patreons. Huge shout out to them. I am so thankful for what you have to be or what you have done for me and what the support that you've given me. Um, huge shout out, especially to Fox uh, from 475. Uh, really good person and is willing to share a lot of information from their account as it's well developed uh thank you for all the dms and sharing all that knowledge with me so that way i can inform the community uh thank you guys each and every one of you if you'd like to join the patreon it's in the description below if you don't want to join the patreon but you want to support please you guys a like a subscribe an upvote on reddit i guess uh to get my name better out there those are all ways to do it for free, no cost. Huge, huge thanks, you guys. Um, as always, you guys, you can find me in the YouTube comments. I try to respond to as many as I see. Or you can find me on Discord. I'm the number one talker on there, you guys. Or, worst case scenario, you can find me on server 193. Open migration sometime next month, confirmed by developers. You guys can come visit me next March. Say hi, stay with me, you know. Until next time, you guys, stay humble, stay happy, stay hungry. Bye, y'all.